Hello, and welcome to Spravka's Engineering. I am an engineer and wannabe filmmaker. I also have a vast interest in retro game design, and judging by the fact that you clicked on this video, so do you. Today we are going to kick off our first project, an Arduino Pixel Game Engine. And if that title doesn't excite you, then you are boring, and I have no desire to speak with you further. We're going to be using an Adafruit monochrome 2.7 inch OLED graphic display, and an Arduino Mega to power our game engine. But wait, you fool, I hear you cry. That's not an Arduino Mega, that's an Uno, and you're right. But due to a few minor complications, we are going to be starting out with an Uno and ultimately shifting over to a Mega once we get things sorted out. Now, every component in this video is available off of the Adafruit website. I'll put some links in the description. I got most of mine from a mix of different sources though, just make sure you have the right parts. The LCD comes with a variety of little doohickeys, a 5 to 3 volt level shifter, I'll tell you why that's necessary in just a moment. There's also a 220 microfarad capacitor, very nice, oh, get her facing the right way, there you go and a 36-pin header to solder onto the LCD. So, first things first, let's get that header soldered onto the LCD. Start by making sure you got enough pins and then snap off the excess. If you end up with too many pins, that's fine, just snap off enough so that you have 20. If you end up with too few, that's okay too. When we solder them on, you'll be able to attach enough from the remaining pins you have, but know that I will be deducting points from your final grade. Alright, let's get soldering. Just make sure that you're working in a well-ventilated area so that you don't inhale any toxic fumes like I did. Maybe wear some safety glasses and be careful so that you don't burn your fingies. Here you can see my solder joints. They are beautiful and perfect and flawless and I'm totally kidding. They're pretty terrible, but they'll do. As it turns out, I need to practice my soldering. I know this, and now you do too. Okay, let's address the first of those complications. As you can see, those tricksters at Adafruit have told me that the LCD may come in parallel communication mode. However, may clearly doesn't mean will, and my LCD came in serial communication mode. They assure us that the SPI communication library is very fast, but since we're going to be making games with this module, we want to squeeze out every ounce of speed we can. And sending 8 bits of data at once is approximately 8 times faster than sending 1 bit at once. Feel free to check my math. And here is the root of complication number 1. There are two tiny resistors on the back side of the LCD, R21 and R18, that are in the wrong place. There are two adjacent slots with available space for the resistors, R19 and R20, and we need to desolder the two resistors and put them into those available slots. Unlike most LCDs, you can't change from serial to parallel mode in any simple manner, your only option is to change around these resistors. Hopefully now you can see why I decided to start with the UNO. All of the tutorials on the Adafruit website assume you're using an UNO in serial mode. Before we start changing hardware and writing our own communication library, I thought it might be prudent to just make sure everything worked in the first place. Anyways, let's get this thing assembled. I feel like I should interject here for just a moment. That 5V to 3V level shifter is absolutely necessary for this application. You see, the Arduino has 5V output logic on the digital pins, but the LCD works at 3.3V. If you connect an Arduino output pin directly to the LCD, there's a good chance that you'll break it. So, don't. That also brings up the second complication, they've only given us one level shifter. That's fine for SPI, but when we switch to parallel communication, we're gonna need some more. But we'll burn that bridge when we come to it.
when you're done, don't forget to put the capacitor across the power and ground rails, with the negative pin of the capacitor in ground. This helps to protect the electronics and reduces any high-frequency noise in your power supply. In an effort to keep these videos relatively short, that's where we're going to stop for today. Next time, we'll take a look at getting our LCD up and running using the standard Adafruit graphics library. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.